Here I have a part that I'm ready to detail in a drawing. With the part file open in SOLIDWORKS, I can use the command Make Drawing from Part or Assembly from the New Document Flyout menu or the File drop-down menu to associate the model with the new drawing I'm creating. Here you can see I've saved several drawing templates that are formatted to the sheet sizes and drafting standards I use most often. If you don't have drawing templates formatted to specific sizes, you can always use the default drawing template provided by SOLIDWORKS. When using the default drawing template, the system will prompt you to select a sheet format to size the drawing sheet. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to drawing templates and formats, which will be covered in another lesson. For now, I'll choose this template here, which already has a drafting standard, sheet size, and format predefined. The initial task of detailing is the creation of views. Views of the model can be created in several ways. One method is using the view palette. Since I used the make drawing from part command to associate the model with this new drawing document, the view palette automatically becomes available in the task pane with previews of the default view orientations of the part. Drawing views are created from the view palette by dragging one of the pictured views onto the drawing sheet. Notice there are options for view creation at the top of the view palette. The one that is selected by default is to auto start projected view. Once I create the initial drawing view, this option will automatically launch the projected view command, allowing me to project other views of the part from the primary view. I'll use the left mouse button to drag the front view onto the sheet. Once I release the mouse button, the drawing view is created in accordance with my settings. In this case, Hidden lines are visible and tangent edges of the part are removed from the view. As with most items in drawings, these options can be customized to suit your preferences, but we won't go into those quite yet. In the Property Manager at the left, the Projected View command is active since I had the Auto Start Projected View option checked. As I move the cursor in different directions, you can see the view orientations available for me to project from the primary front view. Clicking with the left mouse button will place the projected view. Because the push pin is depressed in the property manager, this command will remain active and allow me to continue placing views until I select the green check. I want to add an isometric view to the drawing as well. To access the view palette again, I can select the tab with the drawing icon in the task pane. I'll drag the isometric view with the left mouse button onto the sheet and release the button to locate the view. Besides using the view palette to generate views, I could also make use of the drawing view commands from the conventional toolbars and menus. When working in a drawing document, the command manager includes toolbars specific to the process of detailing, such as the view layout and annotations toolbars. The view layout toolbar contains the drawing view commands, these commands can also be accessed from the Insert, Drawing Views, drop-down menu, or by right-clicking anywhere on the sheet, and choosing Drawing Views from the menu. Drawing Views have several properties that can be modified to adjust how the view is represented in the drawing. They can be accessed in the Property Manager whenever a view is selected. On the drawing sheet, a selected view shows with a dashed view border surrounding the view. I'd like to change the isometric view to show as shaded. I can change the view's display style by modifying its properties. I'll left-click the view so it's selected. Then in the Property Manager, I'll find the Display Style options and select the Shaded icon. Besides just the display style, I can also use the Property Manager to modify the view's orientation, scale, the configuration shown in the view, and more. Drawing views can be repositioned on the drawing by dragging the dashed view border with the left mouse button. If I drag the front view, notice the projected views move as well to maintain their alignment. When moving a projected view by default, I'm limited to only moving it along its axis of alignment with its parent view. 
the front in this case. Dimensions are an essential tool for detailing drawings. Before I go into the specifics of adding dimensions to the drawing, I would like to quickly mention that SolidWorks has two types of dimensions that can be represented. There are driving dimensions and driven dimensions. Driving dimensions are imported into a drawing from the 3D model and control its geometry. They are the dimensions created in the sketches and features of the 3D model. Driving dimensions can be modified from the 3D model or the drawing views to make changes to the model. Driven dimensions, on the other hand, do not control the geometry and are added to the drawing manually. Driven dimensions are used in cases where the dimensions you use to design the part are different from what you would like to use in the drawing. Driven dimensions cannot be modified to update the model geometry, but will update with the part if changes occur. The default settings in SOLIDWORKS will display driven dimensions as gray, while driving dimensions will appear as black. Let's get back to the example we were working with. Since most of the dimensions I created in the features of the 3D part are the same dimensions I wish to use in this drawing, I'll import them into the drawing views. Model items is the tool used to bring in the driving dimensions from the sketches and features of the model. Once I activate the command, the property manager appears. I can choose individual features I wish to import information from or use the entire model as the source. I'll choose the entire model for this example. I want to import items into all views, so I'll leave this checkbox selected. Alternately, if it were cleared, I could pick and choose which views to add the information to. For the dimension options, I'll choose to import dimensions marked for drawings, which is selected by default and also pick whole wizard locations and whole callouts. Once I use the green check to complete the command, the information I specified is added to the views on the sheet. Drawing dimensions can be manipulated in several ways. They can be repositioned by dragging the text with the left mouse button. To move a dimension to another view, it can be dragged while holding down the shift key on the keyboard, or to copy a dimension to another view, it can be dragged while holding the control key. If you wish to remove a dimension from a view, it can either be hidden from the right click menu, or deleted by selecting the dimension and hitting the delete key. Dimensions also have properties that can be modified. Dimension properties can be accessed in the property manager when a dimension is selected, or by using the dimension palette. The dimension palette appears as a small icon in the graphics area near the selected dimension. It can be expanded by moving the cursor over it. Properties of a dimension include text, tolerance, precision, and formatting options. Multiple dimensions can be selected at the same time to adjust common properties. To select multiple dimensions, I can use a selection box, or I can hold the control key down while clicking dimensions. Having multiple dimensions selected also allows access to alignment options. At this point, I'd like to add one more dimension to fully describe the part. I want to show the overall height of the vertical boss. Since I did not create this dimension in the model, it was not imported with the model items command, so I'll add this dimension manually. This will be a driven dimension since it does not control the geometry of the part. The tool used to create this type of dimension is the smart dimension. I'll activate the smart dimension command and choose the points I wish to dimension between. When using this command in a drawing, there are some additional tools to assist in detailing views. 
The circle that appears beneath the cursor is the Rapid Dimensioning Tool. The Rapid Dimensioning Tool is unique to working within a drawing and allows a dimension to easily be located off of the view. If other dimensions exist, the Rapid Dimensioning Tool ensures that proper spacing is automatically created. Moving the cursor away from this tool will dismiss it and allow the dimension to be placed manually. Notice the dimension appears on the sheet as a gray color, indicating this is a driven dimension. As I mentioned in the beginning of this lesson, drawings created from a 3D model are fully associative. If I make a change to the part, that change will propagate to any and all drawings that reference it. To demonstrate this, I'll access the part model and change a dimension. A model referenced in a drawing view can be opened by selecting the view and using the Open Part command on the Context Toolbar. The Context Toolbar becomes available near the cursor when I make a selection or is available at the top of the right-click menu. Alternately, if the part file is already opened in another window, I can use the Window drop-down menu or the standard Windows shortcut Control tab on the keyboard to switch between open documents. I'll make a quick change to the base plate feature of the part by double clicking a face of the feature, then double clicking one for the associated dimensions. I'll change this length dimension to be 150 and hit Enter. I'm done making changes, so I'll rebuild the part geometry to incorporate the change. I'll use the Control Tab shortcut to switch back to the open drawing document. The change to the model is properly updated in all of the drawing views. Driving dimensions in drawing can also be used to modify the model. The dimensions that were created with the Model Items command are the same dimensions that exist in the part. When I double click a driving dimension in a view, I can modify it in the same way I would if working in the part document. I'll change the length value again to be 125 and rebuild. The drawing views and the model have been updated. When I again switch back to the part, you can see the change has taken effect here as you would expect.